to Much Music, 299 Queen West, Intermittent Interactive with Blind Melon. Nice to have you with us. And I believe uh, an extra member tonight would be Jerry Garcia. You know, I think that his face just kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. I think a full life uh, doesn't have to be talked about. Okay, let's do this. Let's get some questions. Uh, why does Shannon always wear a horseshoe necklace? It's not a horseshoe necklace. It's a cockroach necklace. I have a phobia of anything that doesn't die in the microwave after five seconds. There you go. <laughs> An audience question going over here. Your name, where are you from? Uh, Shane, I'm from Brampton. Yep. Um, if you were given the chance to write an autobiography, what would you begin your first paragraph with? Why? <laughs> All right, Dave, I'm going to come around you here for just a second. Somebody... You know, this is very, this is nervous taking, take, taking this. Here you go. Really yeah, Shannon, what does your tattoo say on your forearm? Uh, this is the poem, God's Presence, that's at the end of the song, Car Seeds, from my um, great-great-grandmother's ledger. That uh, she wrote it in Febu uh, February 11th, 1884, and um, it gave me a little hope that I had a little co a little sense in my family because my immediate family is kind of like hee haw. <laughs> <laughs> so I found this and I realized that maybe I do kind of, you know, give it a little bit of a shit about my family heritage. So uh, yeah, there's something that. Um, in the role of hee haw, what role did you play? <laughs> I was the lost child. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> We have uh, Sue Tyler on the phone. She is with The Buzzard in Cleveland, WMMS in Cleveland, a rocking station down there. And we are being seen, of course, on uh, Much America. Sue, are you there? Yes, I am definitely here, Shannon. First of all, I want to say congratulations on becoming a new dad recently. Thank you. But, but he brought no pictures. We have no pictures. <laughs> All right, and the, the first question I wanted to ask you, the tune No Rain obviously helped bring the, you know, the band Blind Melon into the forefront of modern music. Into the forefront and, of a lot of courtrooms. <laughs> there you go. There also, there had to have been a little bit of temptation at least to do like No Rain Part 2, but obviously from listening to Soup, you definitely chose a different approach. Did you guys purposely avoid trying to do the same type of sound that was in No Rain on the album Soup, or did you... I mean, did that just come naturally? What happened there? I think that just not trying to do anything uh, permits you to have a little bit more freedom when you go about recording. I think that this band, and, and I'm certain, I'm sure that everybody will agree, if we ever try to uh, construct any type of format, it usually gets completely screwed up. So um, I think one that. from your heart. <laughs> well. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Oh, thank you. Well, Blind Melon me. may be rocking in Cleveland, but in fact, Canada, Canada is the best territory in the entire world for this band. Three times platinum. Now, just one thing. Do you have any theories on that? Any theories on why... People we... are way cooler here. Thank you! <laughs> Cheap applause. Cheap applause. Uh, we have Linda from uh, the province of Ontario. Linda, your question. And who's it to? Um, it's towards Shannon. Um, I was wondering if parenthood has affected your musical career in any way? You know, I, I, was, I, was telling, I was telling you earlier, I thought that this screwed up your, your doing this for a living screwed up your sleep, but doesn't compare no, to kids. being, <laughs> being <laughs> they a don't father. Keep... I, went on, I, I, we, I we went on tour so that I could catch up on my sleep, and that doesn't sound... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it affects, it affects every aspect of your life. I, you know, obviously I'm new at this, and um, it's hard to be a parent and a child at the same time, so I'm just trying to, do, to mesh it together and make it work, you know. And I, I think it's helped me, uh, believe it or not, grow up a little bit. No. Aww. No. We have a great concept here called Speaker's Corner where people uh, get access to a television camera, and in fact, we uh, run the questions or the statements. Here's the Speaker's Corner. Is this from uh, Vancouver? Vancouver! Oh, here's a question from Vancouver. Get ready. Listen carefully. We're going to ask Blind Melon a question. We heard you got a record deal without even playing a gig. Is that true? We got, we, we got a record deal uh, from a demo tape that we made in a garage, basically. And we played, you know, some shows for, for the Weasels and... <laughs> Los Angeles and, and, and ended up, you know, getting signed and leaving as quickly as possible. When I introduced myself, I said I was from Vancouver, and you went, ah, so let's just deal with that for a second. Halloween, a couple of years ago. 
You uh, you went through this exchange. It was, believe me, the press. An exchange, yes, exactly. With your audience, yes. It's a deposit. Yeah, precious bodily fluids. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but you did your time there. And yeah. tell me about how that affected you. It, uh, it was probably a, a good thing that it happened, believe it or not, because um, I had to do some, uh, some community service in a heroin detox, um, in a Salvation Army heroin detox. Yeah. And uh, I think that... Um, I think that for anybody who, who thinks that, that it's a very glamorous life, um, if they could have witnessed the insides of this place, I think that they would have probably had a different thought about taking that, that road. It's definitely not the high road, but um, out of something bad, I, I uh, you know, my punishment was something that uh, probably helped me out, something that maybe I needed to see myself, you know. Sometimes it takes that before you can really understand, you know, what, what, that, what it'll do to you. So, yeah, I mean... What, you know, what, what do I say to my child when she asks me about that? You know, I don't know. Or think of some. I'll give her your number. I, <laughs> I noticed that Pigeon Park and Hastings Street made the lyrics on the album anyway, yeah. so that's cool. Uh,